Good morning. My name is James and I'll be presenting the webinar. The purpose of this webinar is to give you an overview of how CDA works in Four Matrix, um, both from a teacher's and an administrator's perspective. So we can use the system to produce powerful summary reports, um, as well as detailed individual reports, um, an example of which I will show on screen now. So this is one of the pupil level reports that you can produce. So first thing I'm going to do is give an overview of what the CDA system is. So it's primarily based around formative assessment. This means it's driven by the assessment of individual skills and units of knowledge within a sin single subject. So a typical example for computing would be something along the lines of know the difference between hardware and software. So this is opposed to a summative grade, which is a single grade designed to give an overview of how well a pupil is doing in a particular subject. So this will be generally the kind of things you're using at Key Stage 4, so it's a predicted GCSE grade, um, the old NC levels at Key Stage 3 um, before AWL and CDA came in would have been an example of this as well. So obviously summative grades are useful. Um, what they don't do though is tell you anything about pupils' strengths and weaknesses and what they do and don't know in a particular subject. So for example, two pupils might achieve a grade four in geography, uh, simplifying it, one may be better at human and physical geography and the other vice versa. So one of the main purposes of Key Stage 3 is to ensure that pupils understand the key skills and knowledge in a subject um, in order to be able to succeed at Key Stage 4. The purpose of a formative assessment system is to ensure that the pupils are being assessed in these key, area, key areas and to identify where they're not. So this is an effectively a mastery approach to learning and is one of the key messages in the DfE's Commission on Assessment Without Levels report. So we have designed our system to be compliant with this. Um, we believe that many other systems that are out there aren't fully compliant. Um, when we were designing the system, we came up with some common pitfalls um, that we thought a lot of other systems were falling into, um, which I've just shared on screen now. now I'm not going to go through these in huge detail. Um, it is on our website. We go through all of these in, in some detail as well, and I'll send you a link um, to that as well as some other bits and bobs after we finished uh, the webinar. So think about your current system for key stage three um, and whether perhaps it does fall into any of these pitfalls. And if they do, you know, whether you can justify them or not, you know. So another big advantage of the mastery approach is it's not tied to any key stage two baselines. Um, this is particularly useful for the current year sevens and year eights. Uh, well, obviously they've not taken any SATs um, due to the effect of COVID. And it also allows the school to focus on attainment rather than progress, um, which is very much an unknown quantity for lower year groups uh, and those with scaled scores. So again, it's one of the pitfalls on there, but it's our view that pupils in lower year groups should not be restricted by tram lines or flight paths that immediately restrict expectations or force a narrative based on prior attainment data. The idea of a mastery approach is that there is a certain amount of skills and knowledge that people need in order to succeed at key stage four. And the expectation should be that every pupil um, should get that because otherwise they're not going to be able to succeed in key stage four, essentially. So, the key thing to note at this point is that most schools will already be doing some of the things that I've been talking about to at least some extent. Um, so you may be doing it using notes on physical worksheets, maybe spreadsheets or using your management information system, for example. So what we've designed um, in our CDA system, it's not necessarily asking that people to do anything differently in terms of planning assessment. But what we've endeavoured to do is provide a platform in which the data can easily be stored and manipulated 
um, with the added benefits of powering powerful filtering and reporting tools. Um, so that's the introduction over. So I'm now going to demonstrate how easy the formative assessment system is to use. So as stated, the CDA system is intended to mirror the processes that happen in school to plan, deliver and assess um, pupils' achievement for a piece of learning. So now I'm going to open up uh, for matrix. So this CDA section up here on the ribbon, um, which is accessible to everyone. You'll notice over here, there's six layers um, which we can access. And these basically are designed to assist with different parts of the assessment process. Over here, we've got some summary tools, which we'll have a look at later. Um, there's also some video tutorials um, on CDA over here as well. So we will start in the learning layer. So this is the main and in many cases only interaction that teachers will have or need to have with CDA. So you'll see down the left there are a sequence of what we call learning objectives um, or LOs for short. So these are the key skills and knowledge I referred to earlier. Four matrix comes with some example learning objectives for certain subjects, and we provide templates for most subjects that can be downloaded and adapted to your school's requirements. Um, we'll cover this in a bit more detail shortly. So first I select the series that I want to enter data into. Um, generally, this would be the most latest series um, for whatever year group you want to data into. So basically these are set up by the four matrix administrator in advance, um, simply creating a new year series using an MIS extract. So what you do effectively for key stage four to bring in the pupils, pupil photos, classes, um, pupil characteristics, you just do an import into key stage three and that will create uh, your CDA series ready for data entry. I'm a teacher, I then select my subject from the list so we've got some built-in ones here. Um, I'm going to select computing. Because we've got classes in there, I can then filter by my own class over here. So I teach 7ITC3. Um, so our intention in future versions of 4Matrix that this selection will happen automatically based on who the teacher is that's, that's logged in at a particular time. So in this particular term, we've been teaching about how to use networks and the internet safely. So a relevant LO for this is LO1. So you can see it's got a number code over here as well, uh, which is know how to use the school network and conduct when using IT systems. Uh, so if I click on a cell for that row, it will show all the assessment grades that are available for me to enter. So if I click on one of those, and then hit apply. You can then see it enters the grade. So we've also got these arrow keys as well, which effectively applies it and then moves on to the next pupil. So there's a number of ways to enter data more swiftly, which I'm now going to demonstrate. So firstly, if you type the first letter of the grade in, that will populate it as well. So I just type S. That's in secure, M for mastered, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you can see you can do that quite quickly. We've also got the apply to all pupils function. So if we move on to LO2 and say this particular um, learning objectives, everyone's secure in it. I can use that drop down arrow there. Um, to apply to all visible pupils. I say it's going to add 30 new grades. We'll just populate the entire row. Um, so then what I can do is say, right, if everyone's secure, except for perhaps, you know, these two pupils here, I can then just go in and tweak those just by entering the particular grade for those two. So if we look down the list of LOs, um, can see there's quite a lot for computing, so 80 in total. 
So this represents the entirety of key stage three teaching for that particular subject. However, it's likely that in a given period, we are only going to be assessing a few learning objectives. And what I can do is use the unit filter in the bottom right um, to only select the relevant LOs. So if I click the drop down arrow, next to the unit filter there. That basically brings up um, all the periods where I'm teaching and what I'm teaching. So we're in the autumn term of year seven. So I'm just going to select all those there. And now you can see it's filtered the list to only show those 14 um, learning objectives that are associated with that particular time period. So what I can now do is, as well as using the apply to all um, horizontally, I can also use it vertically. So if I want to apply a particular grade to all uh, one particular pupils, so say uh, Devan is secure in everything I've assessed him for in this particular series. You see, I can then add in the grades that way as well. Um, so for a particular unit of work, you can actually move forward quite quickly and enter you know, quite a lot of grades at once and then just tweak things as you need to if particular pupils are different to the others, basically. Okay, so you may be wondering how the data in the unit filter gets there. So that is entered into what we call the teaching layer. And that's entered either by the head of department or the full matrix administrator. So the data contained in this layer is what's usually known as the teaching plan or the scheme of work. So it's a record of what is taught and when and how it's assessed. So all departments should have one of these, um, basically. Like I say, it might not be in this particular format. It might be in a spreadsheet, just written down on a bit of paper. Um, but it will be there in some format. So you can see here, if I go into computing again, that using the school network and the e-safety topics, so these ones here, are being taught in the autumn term of year seven, and they're then being assessed using the learning objectives one through seven. So the plan can either be input manually um, by, or by importing via a spreadsheet. So you see you've got an add function up here. So yeah, I can add a new topic, um, add a new theme in, give it a particular code, assign it to a year, and then choose from all my learning objectives and outcomes down here. So entering this is optional. Um, hopefully you could see that on the previous screen, it really helps with data entry in the learning layer. Um, as well as being quite a useful visual reference in here as well as what's to what's been taught when. Moving on to the main admin function in terms of CDA setup, um, this is the statement editor. So this lies in the admin uh, function here. So it's not available to teachers, so it's just an administrator function, as I said. So this is where basically you add all the learning objectives in. Um, so you can see here for computing, we've got those 80 learning objectives. If I want to add a new one in there, I can do so, given the automatic code of 81. Um, again, your heads of department should be providing this information, preferably electronically. And then again, you can just import it copy and paste it into here, manipulate it so it's using those categories and then just import it. And you can bring in lots of uh, learning objectives at once doing that. If we move on to English, um, you can see it's possible to add a category and subcategory um, into here, which basically allows you to group things by topic. 
Um, again, this is entirely optional. It's not a mandatory fill, but it can help with maintaining the statements. So as I mentioned earlier, it's possible to import a whole new subject into Formatrix complete with learning objectives and teaching plans. So uh, these have been made available to all Formatrix schools on our website by schools who are actively using the CDA solution. So I'll demonstrate how to do that now. So on Formatrix and customer portal resources, CDA, and we've got the templates and library in there. So, I'm going to import a new subject, Spanish, um, from St. Aidan's Catholic Academy, we've made that available. So I've just downloaded it now, it's opened up in Excel. You can see your list of LOs there. They've also put in a, a teaching plan as well. So to do that, I go into CDA, Admin, uh, Manage Subjects. Yeah, you can see the links here to the templates in the library. So here's the file I just downloaded. And that's now added Spanish in for us as well. So if I just refresh that page, you can now see we've got Spanish there. Um, we can manipulate these LOs as we want. So say in our particular school, we didn't want to do this particular module, uh, which is around food. We can take those out as well. So, Again, if you're, you can point your heads department towards that key stage three library, and they can then download those and manipulate them as they like, um, basically, to be able to get them how they want it. So just looking at the questions now. Um, so su subject units should be entered for every subject. Is this an upload? Uh, yes, it can be. So we're going back into the teaching layer. So I showed how to add it manually. Uh, again, you've got this import function here. You can see basically you've then got the headers um, to matching that here. You can just add, add the data on here and click on import to bring it in. So again, your heads of department should be providing you with something that looks similar um, to this. You can then just manipulate it slightly in Excel and then just import it that way. Okay, so returning back to the learning layer, um, you may have noticed that there is a value at the bottom of the screen. So each CDA grade has a point score, um, which equates to a nine to one grade, and the value shown at the bottom of the screen is the average for a child and a subject. So effectively, this is actually a summative grade um, which I was referring to earlier. So you see if I start adding more and more grades in for this pupil, you can see that score at the bottom starts changing. So if you want to, you can capture this value and turn it into a grade that can be then used by the summative analysis tools in Four Matrix. And this is done through the predictions layer. What's going on here? You'll notice it's got um fine grades and uh, an average nine to one grade in there. So what it's doing is looking at the average um, score, ma uh, mastery grade score for each pupil, and then translating that into a fine nine to one GCSE grade. Um, and I'll show you where that's, the parameters for that are defined um, after we've done this import. What I can then do is save the results to a series so I've got option to save to the current series or another series. I can choose to sync all subjects or just from a selection. Then tells me what it's doing. So are these new results or existing results? I use it overwriting or adding new. And then done. 
So then if we go into the main analysis tools um, in four matrix, So you can see it's then brought in some summative nine to one grades for those subjects we've entered mastery grades for. So again, like I say, do, doing that step is entirely optional. Um, you may find this analysis useful or you may not, depending on the way your key stage three system works. Um, so it's entirely possible to function with it entirely in CDA doing your analysis. Or you may find this extra bit of analysis using the summative grades useful um, at key stage three as well. No, it's entirely up to you. So the value attached to each grade, what I was talking about earlier, i.e. what's used to produce these summative grades, can be edited in admin, CDA options, manage settings. So you can see here we've got the um, default mastery grades. Um, so these will be in your version of four matrix as well by default. And you can then see they've got a points value attached to them, which equates to nine to one. Again, I can manipulate that if I want to. So this won't change anything retrospectively, but now anytime anyone is a secure grade, it'll be worth a seven. What I can also do is add a new grade in. So that mastery grade of emerging plus will now be um, available for us in CDA when we go back into the learning layer. So over here on the right, we've basically got the grade mapping, uh, which is looking at the average mastery grades over here and then turns it actually into a nine to one grade that you can then use for summative purposes. So for example, for pupil scores between 4.83 and 5.17, that'll equate to a straight five. They're between 5.17 and 5.5, um, they'll then move to a five plus. Again, this is entirely uh, manipulatable if you want. So question, can you import the individual student grades EDSM if currently recorded in a different system? Um, the answer, if you're looking at an individual pupil level, is no currently, um, but that is a high development priority, basically. Um, so we are planning a whole raft of improvements to CDA. And yeah, that's, that is one of them, basically. So at the moment you have to manually enter the grade, um, but we want to introduce the option basically to in actually import CDA grades as well for pupils in different subjects. So again, that then would allow you to migrate any data you've got in your older systems. And it would also add more functionality into the data input here um, because potentially you would, teachers would be able to add those grades onto a spreadsheet and then you could just import them in rather than doing that data entry. Um, so it's another option. Okay, so that is most of the process in terms of the administration and input. Um, so I'm going to move on to some of the outputs that's available. So there's some several useful CDA specific analysis tools and reports, which I'll outline, outline some of them now. So the attainment layer, if we go back into CDA, shows how a pupil summative grade has changed over time. I'm going to look at English. So I've selected my CDA subject over there. Select the pupil from down here. So the CDA grades are represented by a green working towards line. So this basically represents uh, the average grade um, for Laurel across all these different series here for CDA. Um, so working towards is often known as the predicted grade as well. 
So you can see here as well, for older pupils, the key stage two baseline has been plotted on the graph um, for the orange bar. Um, again, if you've converted your scale scores in any way, um, back to a predicted pH start point or the old NC levels, um, this will show here as well. Obviously, when we get guidance about how scale scores relate to anything um, from the DFE, we'll add that functionality into here as well. When pupils move into key stage four, um, we can actually then add in GCSE grades as well. So I'm selecting a key stage four subject, English language. So that's represented by the blue dots here. Add in this performance line that will then draw a line of best fit. And what it's also done as well, uh, it's added in this green and red section, and that's basically what you have defined as the pupil's targets. So some series, if you go into admin edit series, you can basically define as target series by default. So you can see here we've got one in year seven and their final GCSE grades here. And it's automatically plotted that onto this graph as well. Um, if you want to, you can designate other, other series as being temporarily target series in here as well, if you want to, by ticking and clicking apply. Um, but obviously it's better just to generally configure that when you import it um, and, and leave it as is effectively. So again, what we'd expect to see, or hope to see at least, is all these different lines converging at the end of key stage four, basically. So what they've been doing in CDA, what their target is, and how what their predicted grade is as well. Um, so this gives us an indication of how well, essentially, Laurel has been doing in English over time. So moving on to a pupil level display, I'll now open the pupil breakdown tool. So this shows um, what mastery grades a pupil has across all their subjects. So again, if we look at Laurel again, so again, while looking at the color coding, um, we can see she's doing or being fairly secure across most of her subjects, which is the green bar um, with a fair element of mastery, which is the blue bar over here. So d and she's got a lot more developing grades, for example. So again, this table over here to the left shows a, a pupil's average grade across all their subjects. If I unfilter that, so we can show all pupils, you can then see um, you've got that range of grades there as well. Again, you can sort by it by uh, sort of sort by column by clicking on the header there. Uh, we can also print uh, reports for all pupils as well. So again, summary report there uh, for the rail across all the subjects, basically showing the graph um, and table that you had on screen previously. So moving on to a similar tool. So subject display screen is very similar, uh, but it displays summary mastery grade data across subjects. So this basically allows the data administrator, subject heads and SLT to make comparisons between subjects um, to ensure that a consistent level of challenge and assessment is being applied. So, you know, for example, if you see that one subject has got a high, very high component of mastery grades and another doesn't, has perhaps got a high proportion of emerging grades, uh, given that the pupils are similar across all the subjects generally, you know, you, you, you've got some questions, you know, are the learning objectives perhaps too challenging um, in one subject? Are they perhaps setting too generously or too harshly? And it allows you to make those kind of, of comparisons um, between those subjects. Hopefully you can see that entering grades and administering, administering CDA in Formatrix is fairly straightforward. Um, 
so as I kind of alluded to just then, the main challenge you'll, you'll probably face is actually getting those LOs consistent between departments. So both in terms of the number of LOs, you, know, you don't want one subject having 10 across key stage three and the other, others having 100, um, regardless of how much curriculum time they've got. And also in the level of challenge, um, those LOs represent the pupils. Um, but again, that's something, those sort of conversations should be happening anyway. Um, because it's the way schools function. So what we're trying to do here is give you the tools basically to assist with that. So again, it does sound a little daunting at times. We are, we are just using the teaching plan or scheme of works already exist. and just trying to get them into a consistent format and the import and add tools can help with that. So we're engaging with this data using the teaching and learning language that teachers use daily within their departments. Um, so the data does not only tell us well, not only tell us how well students are learning, but how they're responding to what we're teaching them. So we can learn to improve our teaching practice at the same time too. Um, so again, we went through this process in my school and as part of the bits and bobs, I'll send you, I'll forward you a link to the case study of how we, how we went about implementing it back in 2017. Um, so I'd say that now is actually quite a good time to start thinking about how you might introduce it for next year uh, of 22, 23. Um, so now just have those conversations, um, draw up a plan of action, get some training in for teachers and then look to start a fresh in the school year in autumn 2022. So another thing I'll send you a link to is a practical guide on how to set up CDA, uh, which again goes through a lot of the things we've discussed today. Again, I'll just reiterate, we've got these video tutorials up here um, for about five to 10 minutes long each, um, which again go through a lot of the things we've talked about. So how CDA works for teachers and two bits on administration, which is to do uh, with the setup Okay, so that concludes the main part of the webinar. Thank you very much um, for your attendance today and enjoy the rest of the term and hope you have a good half term break.